behind it in the future and it's going to be blamed on uh, these rogue extremist groups and eventually it's going to be used to enact this Chinese style internet that Joe Lieberman and others have passed which is based on the premise that Homeland Security can just make a phone call and get your website shut down which um, in, a, in a convoluted sense is what happened with WikiLeaks because they had their website hosted on Amazon's cloud server um, and Homeland Security just put a telephone call through and it was shut down. So that's why they're moving everyone over to this so-called secure internet too, this cloud system uh, where you basically hand over all your content over to whoever runs that system. But on the subject of hackers, it was admitted that um, one in four of hackers in the United States work for the US government. So, of course, they've com completely infiltrated this uh, area, as Alex was just discussing, and they're going to use it for false flag cyber attacks, even though the Internet, uh, you know, the new plants, the power lines, they're not even connected to the Internet, but they're going to say that it's connected so they can use it as a, as a pretext to take over the entire Internet and the communication system. Yeah, and, and dovetailing with that, we have the Combating Online Infringement and Counterfix Act in the U.S., which they've already used to shut down gambling sites. There's also the EU Intellectual Property Rights Strategy. Uh, they really want to force, of course, YouTube is part of that bigger system, but sites like YouTube, they want to force them to shut down everyone preemptively uh, before you can even uh, defend whether or not you have a right to use something that may be questionably in copyright. I think that really goes hand in hand with the cyber agenda and why there are so many big wigs of the online world now at Bilderberg meeting each year. Uh, Alex Banesh, what is your take on that? Well, obviously, we, uh, <laughs> we, were, uh, uh, we had the experience of uh, seeing how technology can us. If the technology race really it's us against uh, these globalist uh, power brokers. And so uh, we were using technology for our benefit. Uh, we were shooting, we were streaming live, and uh, there was one incident when we were chasing Dre Bilderbergers up uh, uh, a mountain uh, in my car. And, and this was an off-limits mountain, and uh, we got fined for the infraction. And we were driving up. This, this very narrow road being chased by police, and this officer probably thought, well, I'm the king of the hill up here, you know? This mm -hmm. is a lonely hill. I can do anything up here. Uh, what he didn't know was that Paul, uh, the entire time, was streaming live over the Internet to I don't know how many people. That's right. They've used all the social media to break through the walls of Iran and other countries that want to clamp down. But I don't think the Bilderberg Group ever expected us to turn that around on them. They couldn't confiscate our footage. They couldn't take away tapes or make us go away because it was all happening in real time. Paul Watson, what do you make of all that? Well, I mean... <laughs> they're furious about that. They can't stand it, the fact that we can stream live to the Internet and it's automatically archived. But again, that's why they're trying to move all the content over to the cloud network where you don't control it. It's not on your servers. And of course, as I mentioned earlier, Apple has now um, got the patent whereby they can send out infrared sent signals that block your ability to film something on your iPhone if you're at, quote, an event. And then it's if you're at a museum. And, you know, if you're at a protest, it goes on and on. So they're definitely scared stiff of the alternative media and the fact that we can have this instant outreach to the Internet and they're going to try every dirty trick in the book to try and prevent us from doing that. But that's a high-tech dirty trick that the Bilderberg Group have been using for years. Uh, I was talking to Alex, uh, Alex Jones earlier about in 2008 when the We Are Change Group found out the golf course, the public golf course the members were playing on and showed up to uh, talk to David Rockefeller and the others. And then all of a sudden, security walked over, picked out one individual guy from the crowd, uh, kind of a new guy that nobody knew too well, and suddenly pulled out, oh, he has a gun, he has a weapon. Now everyone has to leave. Now no one's allowed in this area. We saw a direct parallel to that this year in 2011 at Bilderberg where they had a false bomb scare. They claimed someone uh, was going to commit a terrorist act against the meeting. They blocked off the road for hours as they built up another wall to block viewing these members, and they really tried to push back against the protesters. As we mentioned earlier, uh, during Bilderberg, they took passports and told people they weren't allowed to film police, told them they would be arrested, knowing they had limited knowledge of all the finer points of Swiss law. 
uh, really just trying to intimidate everyone. And I don't think it's working, but they've been pulling these dirty tricks for years. Uh, Alex Banesh, what was you? What did you make of that? Uh, well, we've seen uh, uh, the local newspaper out of uh, Graubünden, uh, kind of the state, uh, the, the conference. Uh, the conference was taking place in, and the local paper on Saturday, uh, Saturday of the conference, uh, had an article on Bilderberg, and they quoted from the police uh, website, and it said in uh, uh, in regards to the. Yeah, then we saw when official members of parliament there in Switzerland tried to enter the group, as well as when an Italian member of the EU parliament tried to enter the group, uh, of course he was kind of sneaking in, uh, the police really reacted with brutality in the case of the EU Italian member, uh, beating him, pushing him down, blooding his nose uh, to the Swiss parliament, really letting them know they're not welcome. Uh, even as they tried to rout out the likes of Kissinger, uh, they also separately stopped a George W. Bush uh, speaking engagement because they were afraid of protesters and afraid of a unfriendly climate in a country that loves sovereignty. I really think it's going to backfire against them. It's also almost a Gandhi-like moment uh, when a protester can just be beat down by a group that refuses to unleash its secrecy, that refuses to disclose what's going on behind closed doors while uh, mandating, trying to implement, trying to force a centralized system upon everyone. Obviously, the group affects everything going on in the world, uh, but ordinary people are not allowed to know. Paul Watson. Yeah, and then, of course, on the final day, we had the secret p police guy basically standing with us the whole time, um, which was very interesting, to say the least. We could touch on that after the break. Absolutely. We'll be back on the other side. I'm Aaron Dykes filling in for Alex Jones. Back live Sunday. This is Infowars.com, The Alex Jones Show, Friday, June 17th. Back in just a moment. We're back again on The Alex Jones Show. I'm Aaron Dykes. Coming up in just a few minutes, Bob Chapman uh, will most certainly be helping us to break down the latest in the global economic crisis, everything going on in Greece. Uh, there are Bilderberg members preparing to step down just before restructuring the government. Uh, we also have the potential for it to spread to Portugal, Spain, Ireland, and it will have great implications for the United States as well as it continues its imperial powers. Uh, we were talking earlier with Paul Joseph Watson and Alex Banesh of Infokrieg in Germany, uh, two fellow witnesses to the 2011 Bilderberg meeting in St. Moritz, Switzerland. I want to let everyone know that Infowars now has a newsletter, the Infowars Insider. It's going out today, I believe, but it's also going out Tuesday uh, with the total coverage of the World War III agenda. We played earlier Alex's video, Obama and starting World War III, and he's certainly doing that, expanding us into more than five wars and continuing to press buttons. Also coming out in that Tuesday Inside Edition of the InfoWars, the InfoWars Insider, that is, still getting used to that name, uh, will be some of the inside coverage of Bilderberg, some of our exclusive footage, some of the things we're talking about, and then there'll be a, a, a longer piece coming out in about a week or within a week uh, with more than an hour of exclusive Bilderberg footage, uh, an interview with Jim Tucker, his breakdown of things. And uh, Jim Tucker is really just great to see him because his spirit, you could see him glowing like so many of the activists. He's very enthused and excited, obviously, that so many young people, so many old people as well, are beginning to fight the Bilderberg info war head on by showing up in person. Uh, we had a great turnout, but Paul Watson, as you mentioned, we also encountered a secret police kind of guy uh, standing amongst the protesters as if he was with us. We saw him actually communicating with police who came over to him, and uh, he fed them information. Uh, but we confronted him, didn't we, Paul? 
Well, that's right. And I mean, the only time he ever really spoke to anyone was after the conference was ending and the police were pulling down the shower curtain. He spoke to them and then he immediately left. But we got an interview with him on camera and he obviously had some base knowledge of what the issues were, which he was trained um, to spew. But it was obvious that he was secret police. Um, but the fact that we got him on camera means not so secret anymore. But I mean, I'd just like to say... The camaraderie between all the activists out there, it's like Alex said before, it, it was like being in the trenches, you know, the sleep deprivation, the rain, the cold, but everybody really pulled together um, and really helped us out in a number of ways. People like Dominic, Luke, Fabian, John, um, Tim, Stefan, Alex, of course, is with us now. All the We Are Change Switzerland guys just want to give a big shout out to them because they were great. Um, and I'm, I was really heartened and encouraged by the coverage, the organisation, the commitment that these guys um, were committed to in their own country in Switzerland there. I really would. I was because you could see we all have more potential in our pinky finger uh, than some of those old crusty guys inside the hotel. Uh, we really are giants and our consciousness is beginning to awaken. I don't mean mine and yours in particular because we're just individuals as well in this info war. Everywhere I go in the country, there's a We Are Change group or a Ron Paul group or some kind of other decentralized activist group, and they're always just getting the work done. It was no different, surprisingly, wonderfully, in Switzerland. They have a whole German language movement. Uh, Alex Banesh from Germany, just one of many people, really. Uh, we Are Changed Switzerland hosted a whole event, uh, mostly in German, but with enough English translations. They have rap groups there singing about the info war and on and on. It was just incredible to see. Uh, I want to thank Alex Banesh for joining us and uh, telling bye right now. Coming up in just a moment, Bob Chapman and more of your calls. This is the Info War. I'm Aaron Dykes. We are live now in the third hour on this Friday, June 17th. I'm Aaron Dykes. I'm sitting in while Alex Jones is away on story, but he will be back in full force live Sunday with plenty to cover as World War III begins to break out, as the Libya war begins to go hot, as Obama continues to resist any kind of congressional oversight or authority, completely rebuking the idea that even the War Powers Act, uh, really a loose compromise only recently put in place, even that that wouldn't hold him back because the level of tensions and escalation and violence in Libya uh, don't warrant anything he would consider to be a war. Uh, on the other hand, researchers now count up to five wars that Obama, the peacemaker, the Orwellian dictator, uh, has us engaged in. We're still in Iraq, obviously. We're still in Afghanistan. And uh, fresh in the news today, Paul Watson, PrinceOfPlanet.com, that we want a permanent presence in Iraq. That's on the websites. Uh, also, Greece falling in riots. The government, um, the Bilderberger, Pop Andrew, getting ready to step down, but only after restructuring the government and making sure people in line with the policies are in place, trying to make sure many of those austerity cuts uh, do go through, even as the people completely say no to taking on the debt that was never theirs. It was always the bankers. And as the Bilderberg Group and the other elitists in this world prepare to deal with the looming euro crisis, what will happen when Greece defaults on the debt? Will it spread to Spain? Will it spread to Portugal? How long until it affects the United States? I'm looking here at a fresh report. IMF cuts U.S. growth forecast, warns of crisis. San Paulo Reuters, the International Monetary Fund, cut its forecast for U.S. economic growth on Friday and warned Washington and dead-written European countries that they are playing with fire unless they take immediate steps to reduce their budget deficits. Uh, but, of course, they largely refuse to do that as they commit us to greater and greater troop presence in the Middle East. And it really appears that World War III looms. So much is going on. I want to go now to Bob Chapman, the international forecaster, really an economic guru and a, a talisman of all things economic and political. Are you there, Bob? I certainly am, and that was a great overview. Well, thank you. I, I hardly know where to begin. I wish I could do it greater justice. Uh, it seems like that, that small window of time before things really hit the fan. Yeah, I think you have to take each part separately. Uh, the hottest is Greece, and we know George Papandreou, uh, made a deal with the bankers prior to becoming elected, and that was to collateralize debt 
that would be money lent to the